Hey guys, and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic, and that is babesiosis. So let's get started. So what is babesiosis? Babesiosis is a disease caused by the parasite of the Babesia species, most commonly Babesia microti, which is usually responsible for infecting and destroying the body's red blood cells. This disease is mainly transmitted by ticks, which can become infected by feeding on infected cattle, roe deer, and rodents. So from this definition of babesiosis, we get that it's a disease which is most commonly caused by the parasite called Babesia microti. And this parasite, when it enters the body, actually is responsible in destroying the body's red blood cells. So these are our red blood cells and they help carry oxygen throughout our body. And when these parasites enter our body, they actually destroy the red blood cells. And it's a process called hemolysis. Hemolysis means to break down the blood or to break down a red blood cell. So this actually goes on to give the patient an hemolytic anemia, but we'll discuss that further down the line. But if we take a closer look at this image, we see what this parasite actually looks like and how it enters the red blood cell and actually begins to infect and then destroy it. So from this definition, we also get that this disease is mainly transmitted to humans by ticks. And these ticks, which are usually the deer ticks or black leg ticks, usually become infected themselves by feeding on other infected animals such as cattle, roe deer and rodents. So now that we know what the basics of babesiosis is, let's take a closer look at how one can contract this disease. So Babesia microti is transmitted by the bite of infected ticks and the main species of this tick is called Exodus scapularis. And this is actually what these ticks look like. It's called the black leg tick or the deer tick and its specific name is Exodus scapularis. So humans typically become infected by the nymph stage of this tick, which is actually about the size of a poppy seed. So if we take a close look at this image to the right of my screen, we see what the adult female looks like, the adult male looks like, and the nymph and larval stages. And this is actually a United States dime, just to give you an idea of how tiny these nymphs actually are. But this is actually the stage in which most humans become infected. So the main way in which one can contract this disease is through the bite of an infected tick. And this is usually during outdoor activities in areas where babesiosis is found. A less common way is also by getting a transfusion from a blood donor who has the babesia infection but doesn't have any symptoms. And in rare cases, sometimes we can have congenital transmission and this means from an infected mother to her baby during pregnancy or delivery and a few of these cases have actually been reported. So if we take a closer look at this image to the left side of my screen, it actually shows the main way in which the disease is transmitted and that is through the bite of the infected tick. So I'm going to start here at number one, which says the adult females drop off host to overwinter and we have the eggs which hatch into six-legged larvae in the spring and the larvae will attach to rodents and they feed on the first host which are the rodents through the summer and into the fall, which is autumn. And then we have the engorged larvae, which leave the first host and overwinter and molt into nymphs. So we're now from the larval stage, we move into the nymph stage. So now the nymphs can actually attach to the second host in spring. And we have these rodents becoming severely infected or even the humans, which can become severely infected. So this is the nymph stage in which the Exodus scapularis tick actually bites the human during their outdoor activity. And then we have the nymphs which molt into adults after leaving the second host and attach to the third host in the fall. And here we have the roe deer, humans, or even cattle, which can be at this stage. And then we have the cycle continuing. And in this way, this is actually how one can contract the disease and how the cycle continues. So now let's talk about some signs and symptoms of babesiosis. So many infected individuals may actually be asymptomatic. Some individuals may go on to develop non-specific flu-like symptoms such as a fever, chills, sweats, headache, body aches, loss of appetite, nausea or fatigue. And many of these patients will also go on to suffer from a special type of anemia. So as we mentioned earlier, 
called hemolytic anemia. And this is a condition in the body where the red blood cells are destroyed. And this can actually last from several days to several months. And in more severe cases of infection in babesiosis, we have blood clots, organ failure, unstable blood pressures, and rarely, in a few cases, death may also occur. So it may actually take from one to nine weeks, sometimes longer after the exposure for symptoms to actually appear. So now let's talk about the diagnosis of babesiosis. So babesiosis is usually diagnosed by examining the patient's blood sample under a microscope and seeing the babesia parasites inside their rare blood cells. So if we take a closer look at this microscopic sample of the patient's blood, we see the red blood cells and then we see these parasites inside. And then we have something called the Maltese cross, which is actually a classic sign of babesiosis. And that's when four of these parasites form this cross by coming together. So if we go back to our first slide, we see in this image here, we have another Maltese cross. So this is actually a very classic sign that can be very useful in diagnosing babesiosis. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of babesiosis. So atovaquone plus azithromycin is used to treat most mild to moderate cases and is usually taken for about seven to 10 days. An alternative regimen is clindamycin plus quinine. And that brings us to the end of this video on babesiosis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.